Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Eileen, or in my language, Eileen. I'm 22 years old. I was born and raised an atheist, and I would like to share with you my story of how I became a Muslim. My story is really long. I don't have anything uh, distinct to pinpoint, like this is it, you know? So uh, the problem with me is that like my story, I can go on for like one hour. I will try to make those less. Anyway, uh, alhamdulillah. <laughs> my parents did not teach me to follow any faith and I'm a Northern European. So religion is not something common here. It's not something it's not something we would ever discuss around the dinner table. No one would discuss God, no one would bring the subject up. And generally people who are of faith are thought of... Um, well, I myself had the attitude of, you know, please man, grow a backbone, okay? Very stereotypical. So going back many, many years, alhamdulillah, uh, soon I will be three years old, inshallah, so meaning that I converted to Islam approximately three years ago. Like in my mind, I never thought religious people equal normal people, which is very shallow and very embarrassing to say, but that is how I thought. And I find that um, it's comforting to other people who are, you know, investigating Islam or who want to understand you, if they can relate to you. And I honestly, believe that I am very relatable, you know, inshallah. <laughs> as soon as I discovered that my friends, my foreign friends, they were religious, I was like, you know, like, they were normal people, they were religious, not necessarily Muslims, but, you know, as Christians as well. And even though I saw from being friends with them that they are normal people, I still thought religion is something, you know, taboo. Like, they're crazy people. I didn't put the two in one, which is very strange. Uh, so naturally, you know, you are influenced by the people you are surrounded with, right? So at one point, uh, the topic of religion became normal, um, and it, w it was normal, you know? So one day I woke up, I was probably, I don't know, in my teens. Uh, one day I woke up and I remember distinctly that I believed in God. It wasn't oh my. who I believe. But um, it was a gradual thing, of course. But one day I remember I woke up. It was I had no duties. Uh, uh, duties. Hey. Um, sorry. I was just like laying in my room and I was thinking and I was like, yeah, I believe in a greater existence. But at that point, that was it for me. I believed in a God, and the faith had entered my heart, so to say, like, you know, we are taught that it is engraved in our hearts anyway, but that's when I acknowledge it. Acknowledged it. That's when I acknowledged it. Uh, but that was it for me. I was like, um, okay, I believe in God, but there are so many religions out there in the world, and I'm just like, little, small Eileen from a tiny country, you know, not even that smart, you know, like how am I to distinguish what is right or which one is right? And God forbid, what if I choose the wrong, wrong, wrong religion, so to say, like, then what? So there was a period in my life I was like, okay, you know, I believe in God, I believe in a higher power, but that's enough. Like God knows that I believe in him and that's sufficient. He knows, he sees my heart, he is, you know, all knowing. That's enough, he knows. After a while, that wasn't enough. Ever since I got f got faith, you know, so to say, got milk, uh, then um, I always believed that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, the only one, everything, you know? So, uh, simultaneously, after a while, it wasn't enough, my little theory that I had prepared for myself in my head. So I started questioning why did he put me here? Like, there must be a reason my God wouldn't be that cruel to just put me here to vegetate and um, with no purpose, you know? He must want something from me because, you know, he's God. <laughs> uh, so he must want something from me and I want to know what it is because I want to... I want to establish a relationship, a bond with my Lord, you know? He is my maker. 
So that's when I started investigating religions. I will fast forward this part because I strongly believe I do not need to uh, undermine others or make anyone else or anyone else's beliefs small in order to promote Islam or in order to make Islam sound right, you know? Islam does it on its own. And I really don't mean to offend anybody. Um, I'm not saying everyone in the world should be a Muslim. Um, this is just my story. And something very embarrassing for me to uh, admit, but again, I feel it helps to confess certain things because people might relate to it. Uh, so for me, I just thought Christianity personally would be the easy way out. In my culture, so to say, it would be, you know, people would frown upon it a bit, but people would accept it. Like, my life would relatively still be the same, but I would find faith at the same time. I would find my path, I would find my way. And that just seemed like such a good deal for me. If anybody cares, the main point why I did not uh, find my truth in Christianity was that I always had, well this is very typical for anyone who has left Christianity and c come to Islam or anyone who, you know, it's a very typical point. I never understood the concept of Jesus in Christianity. In my culture, so to say, it would be, you know, people would frown upon it a bit, but people would accept it. I would have many things to say on the topic, but uh, that is not on focus here. I'm not here to undermine anyone else or anyone else's beliefs. Everyone has their own freedom. A lot of people tell me that. It's so weird that someone that young from our culture room would, you know, be searching for a way to begin with. But um, I never drank, I never smoke, which are the things that are really easy for me. Being a Muslim, like I know a lot of Westerners, this is something they have to give up or clubbing or stuff like that, I never did it. Um, I wasn't an outcast or anything, uh, but I didn't also necessarily fit in because I didn't do these things and these are, this is the norm, unfortunately. Um, not just in the West, you know. In my country, there is, well, we are like one million people and the amount of Muslims is like a million times less than that. So the community and the amount of Muslims is really small. And at the time we didn't even have a mosque. We still don't, but there, you know, there's a cultural center, which I know, alhamdulillah. Uh, so anyway, there was this little apartment that served the purpose of a mosque. Uh, people would gather there, study there and pray there. Uh, but no, inf so like that is the place I went to. I remember my mom was really freaked out, you know, like I asked her to drive me there and uh, people were going in with hijabs and everything and she's like, whoa, and even me, I was intimidated at the time. I was like, whoa, wasabi. So I went in and uh, it was a positive and a negative uh, experience at the same time because I couldn't get information in my mother tongue nor in English. English is not my mother tongue, by the way. Um, and uh, all the information was only available in Russian and I didn't understand anything so I basically came back clueless although they did has ask me to put on the hijab which was my first time mm, I had very mixed emotions about it because I wasn't ready to accept Islam or anything yet Islam was not an option for me I would like I didn't mm, I didn't think of it as an option not something to be considered you know they crazy so I got like um, material about Islam in my mother tongue. They were just printed out pages. There wasn't like books or anything at the time being yet. So um, I took those home with me and I hid them under my bed. You know, I didn't want to freak out my mom that oh, I'm reading about Islam now. So I hid them under my bed, not hid, but you know. And at the time being, I was still in school and I had a lot of schoolwork to do. And this is one of the things uh, which I think a lot of people do, and I did it as well. I uh, had the mentality that uh, I'm busy right now, I will study it later. Which I want to take a moment to, you know, put on everyone's heart that you might not have tomorrow. So please, whatever it is in your life that you strongly want to do and intend to do, then do it now. Uh, trust me on that. 